So, hello students, let us uh, continue uh, from our uh, previous discussions on, um, on prismatic elements and from today onwards, we will be looking at uh, uh, the continuum like soil or uh, plate or uh, something and before we go into the other aspects, let us first look at uh, what are the uh, stresses and strains within a continuum, how do we define them? how do we develop our um, um, e uh, different equations of equilibrium and then how do we calculate um, the strains and stresses within these elements and let us see. And uh, before that, um, let us briefly discuss about uh, the prismatic elements uh, that we have been uh, uh, discussing over the past uh, a few classes. Then after that, we will move into the uh, stresses in a continuum and then um, uh, see the compatibility conditions and then the definition of uh, different strains and then the stress strain uh, relations. See till now we were looking at only um, the prismatic elements which are uh, long compared uh, much longer compared to their uh, cross sectional area and we have seen um, um, different type of structures like the uh, the plane trusses and the plane frames and so on. And the advantage uh, that we had is that uh, we can uh, readily identify all these uh, connection points where uh, the different members are joining and we can uh, treat them as nodes and define our degrees of freedom uh, like x and y direction uh, displacements. Uh, for bar elements or for um, beam, beam elements, we have 3 degrees of freedom, 2 displacements and 1 in plane rotation. And uh, once we define the degrees of freedom, then we can um, form the equilibrium equations for um, each element and then assemble them. And um, so, these equilibrium equations for these um, prismatic elements, uh, we were able to obtain uh, by using the fundamental definitions uh, like for um, uh, for uh, bar elements it was uh, AE by L and then uh, we had rotated that in different directions for getting our uh, global matrices. Similarly, for the beam elements also uh, these are very simple, slightly more complicated uh, compared to bar elements, but we can directly write the stiffness coefficients as 12 E i by L cube, 4 E i by L and so on. And the finite element analysis of the structures is uh, similar to uh, structural analysis methods. And uh, till now, we have seen um, how to determine uh, the stiffness matrix or equilibrium equation of um, individual elements and then how to assemble them to get the, uh, the global matrix matrix uh, for the entire structure, then how to apply um, our uh, boundary conditions like how do we tell uh, whether a, a support is a hinge or a roller and that we have seen. And then we have also seen um, some methods for applying non-zero displacements. Okay. And um, so, that was uh, a brief introduction uh, to finite element analysis through these uh, prismatic elements. And now, let us uh, move on to more complicated um, um, materials like our structures, like our continuum. And uh, in general, a continuum could be in uh, three dimensions. So, we define um, three coordinate axes x, y and z and, um, and then um, we have three displacements u along the x axis, v along the y axis and then w along the z axis. And we can also as we draw uh, these uh, three axes, we can also imagine um, three different planes say y z, x z and then um, x y planes like this like uh, perpendicular to x axis, we have the y z plane and perpendicular to y axis we have this x, x z plane 
and then perpendicular to z axis we have our x y plane ok and um, uh, because we need these planes to be able to imagine our um, stresses and the strains and the strains within a continuum we could have a different type of strains. So, we can have uh, three normal strains epsilon x x, epsilon y y, epsilon z z. I will explain in a few minutes why we have a double subscript x x, y y, z z and so on ok. And um, uh, these uh, three normal strains they are in the three respective uh, coordinates x axis, y axis and z axis and the strain along the x axis is actually acting perpendicular to the uh, to the plane of y z that is what uh, we had indicated here. See this um, any strain in the x axis is acting normal to this plane and uh, normal strain in y is acting perpendicular uh, to this um, x z plane and then epsilon z z is acting perpendicular uh, to this x y plane. And uh, we can also have theoretically uh, 6 shear strains gamma x y, gamma y z, gamma z x, gamma y x, gamma z y, gamma x z and for uh, rotational equilibrium uh, these um, gamma x y should be equal to gamma y x and so on. And um, so, although theoretically we can have uh, 6 independent um, shear strains we will end up with only 3 of them because of the uh, symmetry and then um, the equilibrium uh, rotational equilibrium considerations. So, we end up with only uh, 3 normal strains and then the 3 shear strains and when we say gamma x y it is a shear strain acting in the x y plane gamma y z means it is a shear strain acting in the y z plane actually shear uh, these are also called as planar stresses or uh, the shear stresses like the, uh, the name itself indicates it is because of relative deformation between uh, two surfaces and uh, this gamma x y, gamma y z, gamma z x uh, they act on individual planes x y, y z and then um, x z planes ok. And then corresponding to these uh, uh, strains we will have uh, stresses, we have 3 normal stresses sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z z and um, these are um, along uh, the 3 coordinate axis x, y and z normal to some planes as indicated earlier. And then we will also have 3 shear stresses <coughs> tau x y tau y z tau z x and uh, the normal stresses they act normal to some planes whereas the shear stresses they act along a plane like x y y z and z x and so on ok. So, pictorially this is what uh, we can see uh, we have uh, 3 coordinate axis x y and z and uh, these are the positive directions and we can imagine the right hand side uh, uh, screw uh, for all our uh, sign conventions. And uh, the convention in elasticity is uh, to denote all these quantities with uh, 2 subscripts and sigma i j like our sigma x x, sigma x y and so on and um, i and j they refer to two different things i is uh, the axis across which uh, the stress plane is considered like for example uh, um, if you are looking at along the x axis we have the y z plane ok and uh, so whatever um, stress that you are uh, considering is acting a normal stress is acting across that particular plane and the j the second subscript j refers to the direction of stress and uh, uh, the sigma i j 
is um, uh, identical equal to sigma j i for our equilibrium purpose. Okay, so, sigma x y uh, is equal to sigma y x okay. and um, the actual sometimes I uh, use uh, uh, the tau for shear stress sometimes uh, sigma x y, but uh, just bear with me, but in most cases I think I am using only tau for the shear stress, sigma for the normal stresses. So, here if you look at uh, this pictorially, uh, this is uh, the the um, uh, y z plane right and um, uh, this sigma x x is actually this sigma x is um, is um, the on a plane perpendicular to y z plane and then along the x axis. So, we have sigma x x and sigma x y uh, because this is the a stress acting on a on a plane perpendicular uh, to this x axis and uh, in the direction of y. So, sigma x y and then uh, sigma x z uh, this sigma uh, this shear stress is acting on the the plane perpendicular to x axis, but in the direction of the z direction. So, it is uh, sigma x z. Then if you look at uh, the complementary shear stress on the other phase it is sigma z x okay, and um, here we have sigma x y and um, on the horizontal surface we have sigma y x right and same thing sigma y z and sigma z y. So, what is the sign convention um, the forces and displacements that are treated as positive if they are acting along the coordinate axis. Okay, and that also depends on whether you are in the positive quadrant or the negative quadrant. So, if it is in the positive quadrant, the positive displacement means it is going towards the positive um, x axis. Let us say we are in the considering along x axis, but then if you are in the negative um, quadrant, any force acting along the negative direction that is um, um, along the x axis in that direction it is taken as a positive quantity okay. and uh, the tensile normal stresses and the strains are considered as positive. So, it is like tensile is pulling you just imagine that um, along the x axis you have a positive force on one face and then another side also it is a positive force, but it is acting on the in the other direction the net result is uh, to apply tensile force within your body and uh, the tensile forces are treated as positive and uh, the compressive uh, forces or the compressive normal strains and uh, stresses that are treated as negative. Then the shear stresses uh, it is a bit complicated because uh, there is nothing like um, um, tension and compression. When it comes to shear force on a surface, uh, we treat it as a positive uh, force if it causes a clockwise moment about a point in the interior of the element, about the center of the element okay. and um, for equilibrium as I mentioned tau x y should be exactly equal to tau y x. And, uh, this is uh, um, the sign convention for shear force we have to carefully consider, but the uh, rule is any shear force acting on a surface of an element if it is going to cause a clockwise moment if you take uh, a moment of that force about um, any point interior that we call as as a positive um, shear force okay. that I will illustrate. And before that, let us look at uh, uh, how many unknowns we have to solve for. So, we have um, totally uh, 15 unknowns, unknowns in any uh, three dimensional problem. We have three displacements, uh, we have uh, six strain components, then we have uh, six uh, stress components. 
So, we have totally uh, 15 unknowns. So, we need at least uh, 15 equations to solve for um, these 15 unknowns. But then we have one more extra unknown uh, because we are dealing with the geotechnical problem. So, we should not forget about our uh, pore pressures. So, the pore pressure will be the 16th unknown for all the pore elastic problems. It is not just simply elasticity, but um, we call it as a pore elasticity because it is including uh, the water. So, we require some additional equation for determining the pore pressures that we will see later. And what are the 15 equations that we have to solve for the 15 unknowns? So, we have um, 3 equilibrium equations. Uh, the sum of uh, forces in the x direction is 0, y direction is 0, the sum total of z direction force is 0. So, we call them as equilibrium equations and then we have uh, uh, 6 compatibility equations. These compatibility equations they relate uh, the displacements and strains and um, so that uh, uh, when you have a body it should not deform into some unreasonable shape. So, we put some constraint uh, through these um, compatibility equations or basically they are uh, the definitions of the strains. And we also need uh, 6 constitutive equations to relate uh, the stresses to the strains. But uh, in our finite element analysis, we are dealing only with the displacement based uh, finite element analysis. So, that means our displacements are the primary unknowns and uh, we uh, determine the displacements first and then um, later we calculate the strains from the displacements and then uh, we calculate uh, the stresses from the strains. So, in fact, uh, when um, we check for equilibrium, we are only going to check for equilibrium in terms of forces when we do the, the finite element calculations. But when you go into the pure elasticity, all the equilibrium equations are, uh, are written in terms of stresses. But that uh, uh, I will explain a bit later. So, in the finite element analysis, uh, we are going to check for equilibrium only in terms of forces at different, at the different degrees of freedom. So, let us look at uh, uh, a two dimensional um, uh, stress state because it is more easy to imagine. And um, let us uh, consider an element having a length of uh, dx and a height of dy and in the outer plane direction let it have a thickness of T. And um, it is subjected to some a two dimensional uh, stress state sigma x and then on the left hand side and the sigma x x plus some other quantity on the right hand side. And uh, these are um, uh, the positive quantities because they are acting along the positive directions of the coordinates on the in the positive quadrant it is uh, acting in the along the positive uh, uh, direction in the negative quadrant it is acting in the negative direction. Similarly, you have um, uh, the shear uh, sorry the normal force um, in the y direction sigma y y then sigma y y plus something that I will explain. And then we have um, uh, one shear stress tau x y because we are dealing only with one plane x y plane. So, we will have only one shear stress tau x y and uh, this is positive um, shear force because it is going to, to cause uh, a clockwise moment if you take a moment about the center of um, this element. Then similarly, uh, the shear force on the bottom surface bottom horizontal surface is also a positive quantity whereas the shear acting on the vertical lines or vertical um, surfaces they are treated as negative because if you take moment it will be an anti clockwise moment and um, so we take that as negative and uh, tau x y is equal to tau y x so that um, we do not end up with um, infinite rotations. Okay. And uh, let us consider a stress state which can uh, vary 
because we don't need to have the uniform uh, stress state within the body. Let us say along the x axis at this place, on uh, this surface we have uh, sigma x x and then um, the right hand side we have sigma x x plus dou sigma by dou x times d x. Uh, dou sigma x by dou x is uh, the general variation or uh, the change in, uh, in x direction stress with x okay, multiplied by d x that will give you your uh, uh, the net change. Okay. Then similarly on the along the y axis we have sigma y y and then uh, sigma y y plus d sigma y that is the rate of change of um, sigma y multiplied by this length d y and then same thing with uh, tau x y tau x y um, sorry this should be uh, this should be d x that should be sorry and then um, this is along the y axis tau x y tau x y plus dou tau x y by dou y d y okay. and um, we can consider the equilibrium along the x axis and y axis. So, along the x axis our uh, this um, uh, this uh, sigma x x on the left hand side face is acting in the negative direction. So, we can write minus sigma x x multiplied by d y that is the uh, the length over which uh, the stress is acting multiplied by thickness in the outer plane direction t minus sigma x x times d y times t is your um, um, is your um, force in the horizontal direction on this face. Then on the right hand side face we have sigma x x plus dou sigma by dou x d x multiplied by d y times t and um, and then we have this um, uh, the shear stress tau x y multiplied by d x multiplied by by the thickness and then uh, tau x y here tau x y plus dou tau by dou y d y multiplied by this length d x the thickness t and then apart from this we could have some body forces. These body forces are uh, the force per unit volume that I am indicating uh, with uh, gamma x and gamma y. Gamma x is the unit uh, body force acting along the x axis okay. and um, so we can um, um, write all these um, quantities and this unit uh, force um, sorry I think it should be gamma x uh, but I got mixed up. So, gamma x and gamma y these are basically our unit weights in x direction y direction uh, these are um, the body forces per unit volume okay. and uh, by simplifying we get um, two equations two equilibrium equations in terms of stresses dou sigma x x by dou x plus dou tau x y by dou y plus gamma x is 0 and uh, similarly in the y direction dou tau x y by dou x plus dou sigma y y by dou y plus gamma y okay. and uh, these uh, gamma x and gamma y um, in static problems we can uh, treat them as unit weights, but in dynamic problems we could have some inertial forces mass multiplied by acceleration is gamma x and gamma y are the generic uh, forces that we consider as additional forces in our equilibrium equations. So, actually in our finite element analysis we are not going to directly operate on these uh, on these equations because uh, we are actually considering uh, this type of um, uh, uh, these equations because uh, the stress multiplied by the area that is the force. So, we are considering only the forces for our equilibrium equations in the finite element analysis. So, in general for three dimensional case uh, we can write like this along the x axis so you have dou x dou sigma x x by dou x plus dou tau x y by dou y 
plus dou tau x z by dou z plus uh, the, un the unit force f x is 0 and so on like uh, this is in the x direction, this is in the y direction, this is in the z direction. Then apart from this we need to have some um, conditions so that our body even after deformation uh, will have its shape and uh, so this uh, when our body is deforming it should deform without developing any cracks okay? and there should not be any kinks developed within the body when it is bending. Okay? That is a uh, kink means uh, there is a discontinuity in our, uh, our shape of the element and there should not be any overlapping of the body after deformation because uh, every point should have some unique um, displacement okay? uh, so that there is no over overlapping and uh, each point in a continuum should have unique uh, displacement field. See only exception is in the case of rigid body deformation, a rigid body deformation is when we move the entire body by the same displacements. So, all the points within this continuum have the same displacements, but uh, in general um, each point will have um, some um, set of um, deformation so that there is some strain and the relation between the displacements at different locations are expressed in terms of the strains. See we have two points and each can deform in different directions and then in different magnitudes, but uh, we need to have some check on how the entire um, body is deforming so that uh, even after um, our uh, deformations um, the shape of the, main, the body is not unduly changed or there should not be any cracks okay? and these are called as the compatibility relations and then most of all uh, the strains within the body should be finite, uh, but then when we have a uh, crack we will have some discontinuity and the strain across this uh, discontinuity will be infinite and obviously that we cannot handle and the uh, this point with infinite stress we call as a singularity point stress singularity and the stress is infinite resulting in the in the cracking. So, the acceptable deformation is like this, let us say you have a square then you apply some um, uh, tensile force or the tensile stress at the most it could um, stretch into a rectangle like this, like this dotted uh, line. So, in uh, one direction it is elongating. Um, whereas, in the other direction it is compressing. So, we cannot have um, 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 say so this is um, the particular for the uniaxial loading, but if you apply um, some other uh, forces in the other direction you may have elongations, but in general so you have a square and if you elongate in one direction its length has increased, but the height has decreased but we should not end up with a crack like this and this we cannot um, um, we will not be able to simulate because our uh, stress is infinite and for simulating uh, this type of problems uh, we have to use uh, some other methodology with uh, crack tip elements or uh, the some other elements for fracture mechanics analysis. But in this course we are not going to consider any any fracture or anything and um, the relation between uh, the different uh, displacements and then the strains can be written like this epsilon x x is dou u by dou x. The rate of change of displacement along the x axis we can define as the normal strain in the x axis epsilon x x. Similarly, epsilon y y is dou v by dou y that is the rate of change of displacement along the y axis and then epsilon z z is the rate of change of displacement in the 
in the z direction dou w by dou z and gamma x y is uh, the shear strain in the x y plane dou v by dou x plus dou u by dou y gamma y z in the shear st uh, strain in the y z plane dou w by dou y plus dou v by dou z and similarly gamma x z is dou w by dou x plus dou u by dou z. So, actually the shear uh, strains they are considering only the, the two displacements that are acting within the plane. So, if you consider x y plane along the x axis we have the u and along the y axis we have v. So, gamma x y is uh, written in terms of u and v variations as uh, dou u by dou y plus dou v by dou x. Okay, that is what uh, we have um, written here and uh, they put a bind or um, some type of relation between two different points. So, that um, after deformation we have some continuity and whatever uh, definitions that have written here they are meant only for small strains and small deformations, but for higher order strains we could write epsilon x x is uh, dou u by dou x plus uh, dou square u by dou x square times d x and so on like we can uh, define higher order terms and but uh, these are meant only for small strains. Then the question comes how small is small? Is it 0.1 percent is a small strain or 1 percent is a small strain? So, actually that is um, where uh, the engineering judgment comes, uh, it is up to the user. Sometimes uh, we call even 5 percent as a small strains um, and then uh, do the analysis just for simplicity because if you go for large strain formulation the computational effort will uh, significantly increase uh, that uh, we will see later. Okay. So, the normal strains are defined as the rate of change of displacements along the respective uh, coordinate directions. So, epsilon x x is uh, dou u by dou x and epsilon y y is uh, dou v by dou y, epsilon z z is dou w by dou z, the rate of change of uh, displacement along the three respective uh, coordinates. On the other hand, our shear strain is defined as the amount of change in the right angle. See, when we twist some element out of shape, uh, the change in the right angle like let us say we have a square element initially and then we are we applied some shear strain and then the shape has changed. So, that 90 degrees is no more at 90 degrees, it could be only 89 degrees or 88 degrees and so on and the change in that right angle is defined as the shear strain okay. and uh, there is another definition scientific definition of the shear strain it is the average strain. So, here uh, we have written gamma x y as dou v by dou x plus dou u by dou y and this is the engineering definition and the scientific definition will be E x y is one half of dou v by dou x plus dou u by dou y ok. And um, so, we um, and in all the finite element calculations we use only the engineering um, definitions not the scientific definition. Let us look at um, what is this uh, shear strain. Let us take um, a rectangular element like this and uh, we twist it out of shape. So, that um, um, there are um, uh, some angles beta 1 and beta 2 and our shear strain we can uh, write as uh, beta 1 plus beta 2 and since uh, we are um, uh, that is our basic definition uh, the definition of shear strain is the change in the right angle okay. and since we are dealing with uh, small um, deformations beta 1 can be approximated as tan beta 1 and beta 2 can be approximated as tan beta 2 okay. 
and uh, tan beta 1 is uh, this relative um, change divided by dx okay and um, so this uh, along x axis we have um, u and along y axis we have the v and um, uh, so let's say that uh, this point it has undergone a displacement of u and v and if you consider this point um, the uh, the height has um, changed by as uh, dou v by dou, um, dou x the rate of change of v along the x axis multiplied by dx will give you uh, this change in the height here. Similarly, dou u by dou y that is the rate of change of u with respect to y direction multiplied by dy is your um, your uh, um, change in the and the, le the length here and our shear strain is beta 1 plus beta 2 and uh, that is approximately tan beta 1 plus tan beta 2. So, by using these equations for tan beta 1 is the height divided by this length, tan beta 2 is this height divided by this length. Okay. So, that comes to dou v by dou x plus dou u by dou y. Similarly, we can um, uh, derive the other uh, uh, two components uh, gamma yz and gamma zx. We can also write this compatibility um, equations in terms of um, the strains epsilon xx and epsilon yy and gamma xy. So, actually um, remember that our uh, gamma xy is defined in xy plane and xy plane means we have two displacement components uh, u and v right and along the x axis we have the epsilon xx and along the y axis we have epsilon yy. So, to relate uh, the, the normal strains uh, to the shear strains we can express our compatibility equations like this also. This puts a relation between the normal strains and then the shear strains. Okay. So, same thing with the other direction gamma yz and gamma zx okay. and um, we need uh, some relation between the stress and strain. So, that uh, if you know the strain we can calculate stress or if you know the stress we can calculate the strain okay. and for this we go back to generalized Hooke's laws that were uh, given to us in um, I think in, uh, in the 1700, or something like that our epsilon x x is sigma x x by E minus mu times sigma y y by E minus mu times sigma z z by E. So, these are the three normal strains and our um, shear strain gamma x y is uh, tau x y by g, gamma y z is tau y z by g and gamma x z is tau x z by g. And uh, so we have uh, three normal strains and three normal uh, three shear strains. And if you see in these uh, normal strain equations, we do not have any shear stress. And um, in these uh, three shear strain equations, we do not have any normal stresses, sigma x and sigma y, and so on. Gamma x y is tau x y by g. Okay and um, the shear strains will produce only the shear stresses they will not be able to produce any pure uh, ten, um, uh, normal stresses okay. and if you apply any normal stress or normal strain you will develop only uh, the normal um, uh, component in that uh, respective direction okay. and uh, and if you apply any shear strain we will produce only the shear stress that too only in that direction whereas x and y the normal strains they may be related to each other uh, because of our poisson's um, um, poisson's ratio okay. and in general our g is the young's modulus uh, sorry e is the young's modulus and the g is our shear modulus e divided by 2 times 1 plus mu and uh, by inverting uh, these relations 
we can get our um, sigma in terms of the the strain like this sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z tau x y tau y z tau z x is um, is this product multiplied by this matrix and then we have the six uh, strain components epsilon x x epsilon y y epsilon z z gamma x y gamma y z gamma z x okay and if you notice we have a symmetric uh, constitutive matrix see the same thing we have seen even with uh, this the constitutive matrix for uh, bar element and beam element actually there um, we did not have a constitutive matrix but we had stiffness matrix directly because uh, we were directly deriving them okay so the consequence of this um, uh, the symmetry in the constitutive matrix means even in our um, uh, stiffness um, matrices will have the symmetry and how do we define the poisson's ratio uh, this is how we define minus of epsilon lateral divided by epsilon longitudinal uh, the minus sign is uh, to indicate or to take care of the uh, the change in the sign so if you apply tension in one direction the other direction we have compression or if you apply compression in one direction in the other direction there is elongation okay and our poisson's ratio is a positive quantity it cannot be negative so we write um, minus epsilon lateral divided by epsilon longitudinal um, knowing that they do not have the same sign if you have tension in one direction you will have compression in the other direction okay and the theoretical range for these uh, poisson's ratio can be anywhere from minus 1 to plus 0.5 and uh, for soils uh, the Poisson's ratio depends on the type of soil and then the type of drainage conditions and so on. So, if you are dealing with extremely loose sands uh, that will uh, collapse under uh, small shear strain, uh, you may have um, um, a negative um, Poisson's ratio because you may have collapse in all the directions. So, that means that in the x axis you have uh, compression y axis also there is a compression okay. but that is an extreme case and um, in fact uh, you cannot handle the negative Poisson's ratio in our analysis and the Poisson's ratio uh, during the undrained, undrained loading we take it very close to 0 0.5 because we know uh, undrained loading means there will not be any volume changes especially if you consider uh, saturated soil. So, actually when we say undrained loading we only mean uh, saturated soils and uh, saturated soils means all the pores are filled with incompressible uh, pore water. So, if you apply any um, volumetric compression or tension there will not be any, any change in the volume. Okay. So, we take uh, the Poisson's ratio as close to 0.5 during um, these calculations. So, in general the saturated clays could have Poisson's ratio more than about 0 0.4 maybe 0 0.45, 0 0.46 and so on and the dry clay soils may have Poisson's ratio of 0 0.2 to 0 0.25 or maximum about uh, 0 0.3 depending on the nature of the soil whether it is severely over consolidated or normally consolidated clay and so on and the sands the sandy soils may have Poisson's ratio in the range of uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.35 and in general uh, the Poisson's ratio of the sands will not change much in the presence of water ok. So, this uh, the Poisson's ratio for the sands could be about um, uh, 0 0.3 and 0 0.35 and when we deal with sands uh, we assume that the sand has very high permeability. So, the pore pressures are not really considered like we can consider effective stresses and now the question comes 
what is the Poisson's ratio of soils at critical state? A critical state is a state where um, you achieve this at a very large uh, shear strain. Uh, the application of any shear strain will not be associated with any volume changes. The, cri the critical state uh, that is uh, our limit state. Okay. So, what is the Poisson's ratio of soils at critical state? You think about and send me an answer by email. Okay. Uh, we can define uh, two modulus parameters. One is the shear modulus g as e by 2 times 1 plus mu and bulk modulus k is e by 3 times 1 minus 2 mu. Okay. And the two limits on the Poisson's ratio we can imagine that is minus 1 to plus 0.5. Uh, if you look at uh, these two relations, uh, the shear modulus and the bulk modulus. So, if your mu is exactly equal to minus 1 or uh, more than minus 1, you will have a problem because you will uh, your shear modulus is negative. So, that means that even if you apply some positive uh, shear strain, you will get a negative stress. Okay. And our um, um, shear stresses and uh, shear strains, they are related to through the shear modulus as uh, tau is g times gamma and our uh, bulk modulus, it relates the, vo the volumetric uh, changes to the mean normal stress. So, d epsilon v is the volumetric uh, strain uh, that we can write as epsilon x x plus epsilon y y plus epsilon z z and uh, this is actually we write everything in an incremental form um, in our uh, geotechnical engineering because uh, even with a small change in the load your uh, uh, stiffness may be different. Okay. So, our uh, d epsilon v is d epsilon x x plus d epsilon y y plus d epsilon z z that is the mean normal stress that is d sigma x plus d sigma y plus d sigma z that whole thing divided by 3 divided by bulk modulus k will be your your um, volumetric strain. Okay. And in fact, uh, the equations for g and k we can derive from the fundamentals okay, that I have not um, done here, but you can do it. Okay. So, I think uh, this is my last slide. So, in this lecture, we have looked at uh, the stress states within a three dimensional continuum and the equilibrium equations in terms of in terms of the stresses, the constitutive equations relating uh, the stress on the left hand side sigma and to the strain on the right hand side through some constitutive equation. That is what uh, we have seen here. Okay, this entire um, uh, thing and uh, this matrix uh, written in terms of the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, it relates the strains to the stresses. So, thank you very much. I think that is the end of um, uh, this lecture. And if you have any questions, please send an email to this um, email address profkrg at gmail.com. Okay. So, thank you very much, and uh, we will meet in the next class. Mm -hmm.